Teach me! Damn. What's up, guys? What's up, man? This has been one of the, like, a head-scratching moment kind of day. It's been one of those special days where something happened that I totally didn't, didn't expect to happen. So, damn, why am I see this? 
That's why I need to fix my green screen, bro. I swear. All right. Anyway, man, it's your boy TGK. I'm going to get into what I was just talking about. But if you don't know what I do here, I do a Dallas Mavericks pregame show for every single game one hour before tip off. The whole point of this is to really kill that hour of time uh, with some decent show and a decent information and decent, like, fun activities uh, before the, the actual game begins. Again, uh, for those commenting and those watching, look at yourself as a co host of the show. Again, without y'all. The show don't go, you know what I'm saying? So appreciate y'all being here. Again, leave a like on the video, all that good stuff. Or until you liked what I'm actually doing here, then leave a like, you know what I'm saying? But again, appreciate y'all being here. Excited for this one tonight. Excited for this one tonight, without a doubt, man. This is gonna <laughs> this is gonna be one of those the closest thing to a playoff atmosphere that we're gonna get to before the actual playoffs. This is it, man. This is a big time game, and it's and it starts so late. Like, I feel like I might miss second the second half of this game, you know? Like, that's the downside of this. It's the downside of that, right? Is it not? I don't know. You tell me. I think that's the downside of it. But uh, according to the Jason Kidd, the way I coach is a little different. You know what I'm saying? Twitter's a hell of a coach. Anyway, man, let's go ahead from being outside out here, outside of my apartment. Let's go back inside. Let's go upstairs to the actual studio, and let's get this pregame show going. Without further ado, let's get straight to some breaking news. Look at here, look at here, man. I don't know if y'all knew, but Luka Doncic, like a while ago, not even a while ago, apparently he was he's he was questionable uh, due to having a uh, left Achilles soreness, right? He was questionable. Going, Damn, I'm not trying to unfollow. Hold on. He was questionable. Not too long ago. He was literally a game time decision. And now he is officially going to be available to play tonight against the Sacramento Kings. <laughs> Now, yeah, we could celebrate, we could be happy, all that good stuff. But part of me is a little hesitant. I was cool with him resting tonight if he wanted the rest. Um, but now here we are. Now I'm I'm nervous. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I do hope. I do hope he's good to go. Like, you know, sometimes you know, being a hooper, you always look at yourself and put yourself in the player's shoes, right? And uh, I'm looking at it like I played with sore Achilles before. But I'm not an NBA player, right? But I played with sore NBA, uh, Achilles before. So I'm pretty sure the competitor and Luca's like, yeah, it's just soreness. Like, I'm good. I hope that's the case. You know, we obviously need Luca to be healthy. But if he feels like he's good to go, he's good to go, man. We just leave it at that. And we just keep rocking and rolling, you know? We just keep rocking and rolling. So, yeah. So Luka Doncic is available tonight, guys. He will be playing tonight. <laughs> And, um, you know, in, in the, I'm going to get to the comments here in a bit, but I, I know y'all remember, uh, those that were watching, y'all remember yesterday's show, uh, we started talking about, uh, uh, locked on Mavs and we were talking about, uh, um, Reggie, uh, out of Tula and Nick Angstead, uh, about the, uh, the Kyrie Irving, if it's worked so far. Right. And part of me, like I was listening to y'all and I was like, you know, I haven't seen it, so I can't like speak on it. And, um. I went back and looked at it, and so, you know, I don't want to be unfair to them and then, like, speak about it. Oh, I didn't speak about it like that yesterday, but, you know, speak about it and then not give context. You know what I'm saying? I want to give context to the conversation that they had. Overall, I genuinely felt like it was a very uh, open-ended conversation. It was pretty pretty transparent as well as far as the, com the conversation went. Um, and I don't think it was that negative. I, I honestly don't feel like it was that negative or or even negative at all too much. Like, I understand certain key words, right? Like, unstable. Like, like those key words, I can see that being a little bit triggering. 
but in general, I thought the conversation was pretty, pretty solid. Uh, to be completely honest, uh, here's one part. Again, to give context, because we talked about this yesterday, and I don't want to uh, leave here with, because I know there was quite a few of you yesterday were not like the happiest with with the way they spoke about Kyrie. So here's a, a at the seven thirty mark here where uh, Reggie uh, Atatula from one hundred five through the fan. I, I mean, I, I've seen him on the show a couple of times, but I am not going to lie. Like today or whenever he, this show happened, I was just like, he's a wordsmith, man. Like his vernacular and vocabulary is like on a whole different planet, bro. Like there's no way I could ever. And that's why he is who he is, right? He on radio. Like, I, bro, just check this out, man. I was very, I, I was taken aback. I was like, damn, like. Like him yeah, and want the best for him. And I think that part's pretty empowering. And I think that that's one thing that, like like Kyrie said, you know, it's more than just being embraced by the community. He's being embraced by this franchise. There you go. Yeah, there um, if I were to, like, infantilize Kyrie in some ways, right, you could look at him, and I think a lot of people have talked about him as kind of like an unstable individual in yeah. various ways. And I, that's not entirely entirely unfair but i mean some we have to be delicate in the ways that we discuss that um so pardon me if it's if it seems like i am being indelicate right but unstable force and so it's all right so now i understand people were talking about uh petulant child was the word that, that triggered them or whatever the case may be he started that that whole opening with uh if i were to infantilize Kyrie, i don't know what the hell infantilize meant right so this is where i think people may have taken those words uh, a little bit out of context but maybe if you put some context into it, I can see what you're saying as well. So meaning of infantilize that says to treat someone as if that person were a child with the result that they start behaving like one. OK, right. I didn't I didn't know that's what infantilize mean is to treat someone like a child. So so then if we could pull it back a little bit. Right. So they ain't follow it up after that right like like Kyrie said you know it's more than just being embraced by the community he's being embraced by this is like breaking down kendrick lamar lyrics like this this was next level i had to look up words in the dictionary like check this out okay this franchise yeah um if i were to like infantilize Kyrie and some okay so if i were to infantilize Kyrie, so that means if i were to treat Kyrie as if he were a child okay let's go there right because i know i know he they never said a, a petulant child i've never heard that so let's see where it goes, right? Ways, right? You could look at him, and I think a lot of people have talked about him as kind of like an unstable individual in yeah. various ways. And that's not entirely unfair, but I mean, some, we have to be delicate in the ways that we discuss that. Um, so, pardon me if it's if it seems like I am being indelicate, right? But un so then he followed up, you know, pardon me if I am being indelicate, and then you know they they went on and had a um, a really an interesting conversation. Like the, he killed it. I, I, following that stable Check force and so it seems like more than any other place dallas has a whole bunch of stabilizing factors around him you you mentioned all of them in fact some of them were the more obvious ones where we talk about jason kidd and nico harrison but of course i mean shout out to sign and shout out the ways that we you mentioned the idea of gosh am gone you mentioned the idea of uh markeith morris are ones that are a little bit deeper and there's a lot more of those things around him in addition to right uh, you have the smiling faces and it feels like there's less of the frowning faces, right? To try and take that. Message. So put it like this, man. Uh, I heard the whole thing. I would say, I understand some of us uh, were upset in the comments yesterday. I don't think it was that bad. I, I really don't think so. I think they were looking at it from multiple perspectives. And I think there, there is, um, there is valid, uh, uh, back and forth as far as how he was treated in these different cities. Uh, if you know Kyrie, he is going to stand up for himself. He's going to stand up for what he believes in. And I, and I think a lot of us w can relate to that, you know. Uh, now, key words, it just depends how you look at it, right? So infantilize that. That's where I'm a little bit sketchy. Like, damn, well, how did he mean that, right? But the way the rest of that conversation went, it wasn't as – it didn't come off negative. Now, the time where petulant was mentioned – and again, I'm only doing this because we talked about it yesterday, right? I, I'm not, if I'm going to be uh, uh, fair, right, I got to show you everything. So this is when petulant was mentioned, and it wasn't combined with a petulant child. Check it out. Without it getting to the place that it did. However, it felt very much like Kyrie was just in a place of simple, and maybe even the word petulant is worthwhile here, defiance, right? And I do wonder if on the back end of all of this, he looks up and he goes, I feel like I was right, but what was it worth? Was that Pyrrhic victory yeah, for right, me, right. right? 
All right, so what does petulant mean, right? Petulant means irritable, impatient, or sullen in a peevish or uh, peevish way. Um, I, I again, I never heard petulant child. Uh, Fantalize is a little different. That I gotta do my research on that word. But uh, just to clear the air, I don't think that video was as damning as it it may have come off. So I just wanted to do my. Uh, due diligence and follow up correctly um before you know people or and people in general feel like they were that negative so again uh, like i always said when you you're creating content like that you got to come up with stuff on especially like a daily podcast like uh, nick angsted does on locked on maps you have to come up with stuff to talk about especially having guests you got to have certain things now depending how reggie atatula went about it you know that that's depending on how we look at it but overall i felt the conversation was wasn't as negative as a uh, uh, previously uh perceived you get what i'm saying all right man let's get back into the comments uh let's go and start off with the comments a little bit see what everybody's talking about up in here up in here hold on let me get let me get some background music going on there we go anyway look at the new member that we got in the building man hold on damn son where'd you find this Appreciate you, Nancy. She is a new member of the channel. Salute to you. She's been, honestly, like a day one. Uh, I remember her uh, from way back when I first started the pregame show. So, salute to Nancy. I think it's uh, pretty pretty dope to see the people that you communicate with also become a member. Um, again, I really appreciate that. For those that don't know, um, the membership uh, comes starts as far as like the shows being exclusive to members only starts on the 31st and that is a uh, midnight madness uh midnight madness uh if, for those that are interested that show is a nighttime show it's a 10 30 p.m show starts late at night uh i talk about some math topics for a good 30 to 40 minutes and then i open it up up the show to have people participate in it and we talk about lists we talk about specific things of the week things of that nature we have a good time and we have a lot of fun uh again consider being a member and again it is only 99 cents ladies and gentlemen it's only 99 cents and I'm not going to hit you with no ads. I'm not going to hit you with my personalized ads. Not tonight. Not tonight. We, we, we got a big game to talk about. Richard Case is in the building. What's up, Richard? I got to cut off the sound before monetization comes through. Uh, he says, Pell's giving OKC all they want in the first half. OKC is up, but it's close. Hey, man. We, do we need OKC to win or the Pell's to win? I need OKC to win. I ain't going to lie. Daniel's in the building. What's up, Daniel? What's going on, my guy? What's up? He said, I know the injury report came out and said Luca is questionable with a sore Achilles, but I will not sit him. These games are too far too important, and uh, we can't split with Sacramento. And I think we talked about it, or, yeah. Well, I talked about it. I I, I didn't want to sit uh, Luca Doncic. Not tonight, man. I mean, I did. What am I saying? I did want to sit Luca because... It, it, if you could guarantee me that we'll split the next game that he does play, then sit him. Let him rest. I uh, did play over 40 minutes last night. But if he's ready to go, man, he's ready to go. we we'll leave it at that. Rich Case, I trust the team, but not Kitty. So can only go 10%. Everything been going good. So I expect the Kitty to do something to mess it up. Oh, man. Nah. Come on, Richard. You got to... You got to come back and, and drink the drink the Kool-Aid, man. You got to drink the Kool-Aid. Latte in the building. Excited for the night. Win, lose, or draw. Let's have fun. Hell yeah. Uh, Latte says uh, it will be a tough battle. Physical coaching bench. Both on back-to-backs. Let's see how it goes. Yes, 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 Latte. I'm going to hit your sound effect twice because it's so short. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Matthew in the building. What's up, Matthew? What's going on, my guy? Says Luca's going to play trust. We need this win badly. We, we really 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 do really do bro really do. it's a it's a bit of a sticky one still what's up what's up dv with the longest sound effect i ever heard in my life now nah, i'm playing i'm playing <laughs> oh hold on hold on my guy ben what the hell ben with 10 memberships gifted bro hello there what the hell so, yeah. Salute to you, Ben. Salute to you. You don't have to do it, but you did it. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Hello there. I appreciate it, my guy. Man, that's... Again, it's been a, a wild day today, man. I'm not going to lie. Today's been a, a wild day. Um, <laughs> appreciate it, Ben. That, that's just crazy. 
reason for that, um, I'm at work chilling, right? Work chilling, working, right? And uh, I got word that Slightly Biased was going to be on radio. And uh, when uh, I saw it on his Instagram and I, I messaged him, I was like, hey, you know, congratulations. I like, think that's dope. Um, and then this happens. And who are some of the other, I'm going to put you on the spot here and I apologize. <laughs> I didn't give you time for this, but I want to give some other Mavs blogs and uh, podcasters and anybody doing Mavs content, I want to give them some love. Yeah. Is there anybody else out there that you're into, that you follow, that you really like? I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of people in the space. I mean, there's... The We Talk Mavs guys, I've been on their show a few times. They do a post a live post game show where you can go and chat and hang out. Uh, TGK on Twitter, he uh, does a pregame show that's live. Obviously, we got We Talk Mavs, which um, are not We Talk Mavs. Sorry. Slightly biased. Um, if y'all were to have asked me when I started this pregame show, what a year ago, that. I would have uh, built the, the the relationships and connections through the show that I would have gone to Legends games, like courtside seats with Big J, that uh, I would have been invited to games uh, with uh, by Rel and, and Chris. If you would have then told me that slightly biased, or not, I'm not even that slightly biased, then if you were to tell me that I would hop on other podcasts to talk about me as a guest, right? Buckets and Beyond. Uh, Chris is a, a podcast, the everyday podcast, until he shut it down. To then eventually get shouted out by Slightly Bias on Beniskin. <laughs> if you know Beniskin and if you're from Dallas, they're, they're a locally grown entity in themselves, right? They, from Richardson, grew up. And and they get to do sports in Dallas like that's that's literally like a dream, right? They're 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 an, an influence in their own entity, but they have you know someone like, I, I you know obviously we all do this math space stuff, and I'm not on the level of slightly biased or any I wouldn't say anybody else like because because I feel like my channel isn't all the way math. So like I obviously do my own original content. I still feel like I'm new kid on the block. But to be recognized like that, to get a shout out, like it's big to me, bro. And um, I just want to say, like, obviously, I, I I try to promote, you know, younger channels, new channels, like uh, Mavericks Digest. Even though, you know, his channel is even bigger than mine, and I'm like, I'm thankful that he jumped on my pregame show, right? Um, TMP, Lockbox, uh, man, who, whoever else I, I've communicated with and and put them on my show and try to highlight them. Like that, that's what I want to do. I want to give back. And so for someone in, in the same space that I guess you could consider us like in, in the same peer group uh, to give a shout out in that moment on that show. Uh, for me, that was massive. Uh, forever grateful to you. Slightly biased. So appreciate it, man. And um, I'll leave it at that, man. Thank you, bro. That, that was crazy. And, and I owe you one. I, I told him I told him I owe him one. And, um, you know, obviously we talk Mavs got shouted out as well. Uh, Mavs Outsiders, and and again, without We Talk Mavs, this pregame show doesn't exist. So it's just really dope to see uh, how the community has come come together like that, and I just wanted to sp spend a little bit of time uh, saying thank you to Slightly Biased uh, for that. I think that was that was pretty awesome, man. I ain't gonna lie. That was awesome. All right, man, enough of the sentimental stuff. Let's go ahead and let's talk about the previous game. All right, so yesterday, yeah, they played yesterday, right? The Dallas Mavericks uh, did play yesterday. Man, I'm over here like, yeah, man, we're going to have a back-to-back. -back. And then the back-to-back -back happens, and I'm like, oh, man, I need to get naps. I need to get naps in, man. All right, so what are quick takeaways from this game, right? I feel like I'll be talking with my hands. What are quick takeaways from this game? I don't know what the hell happened, right? The first quarter... The first quarter, we gave up 41 points. The fourth quarter, we gave up 17. It's like after that first quarter. My fault. 
It's like the after that first quarter, the Mavericks said, F that, we're just going to lock you up the rest of the way. Uh, the Mavericks didn't, you know, break 30 at any other point in the rest of that game, but they locked these dudes up, man. They locked these dudes up. Now, in the first half, we shot 25% from three. I'm kind of curious to see how much what our shot percentage was uh, by the end of the game. So, <laughs> we stayed at 25%. We only got 3% better. So, what are the key takeaways, right? So, we have more rebounds, um, 47, so one extra one. We had three more assists. We had six steals, seven blocks. Ah, I see where we won, ladies and gentlemen. I see where we won. The free throws are kind of even. The amount of shots were kind of even. The three-point percentage was even. You know where the Mavericks won? Right here. Oh, God. Here we go, Internet. Damn it. Right here. Whatever I highlighted. Six turnovers. And why can I not see myself? You know, this is... This is this is what a, what T-Mobile home internet does for you. All right, that's what I got. Six turnovers, man. Six turnovers to me was the thing. The Mavericks are great at protecting the ball, and in a game like that, like that yesterday, where the Jazz were going to come out to play, you only had six turnovers in defense. Yeah, that, that was the, the big thing, man. You take a look here. Luca was a uh, plus ten. Uh, PJ Washington plus six. Gafford plus fifteen. Kyrie Irving plus nine. Tim Hardaway Jr. plus eight. Tim Hardaway Jr. for as bad as he shot, five for 14, three for nine from the three. Three for nine from the three ain't bad. But Tim Hardaway Jr., bro, he had three steals his damn self. Luka Doncic had a charge. He, he took a charge in this game. The Mavericks are finding ways to win even when the shots are not going down. And... Again, the Jazz were going to be motivated. They were a bit of a trap game, right? And they did their damn thing, man. They did their damn thing. So, salute to, salute to the Mavericks for holding it down. Proud of them. Now, tonight, tonight's the real test, man. Let's get back into the comments, man. Let's get back into the comments. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where am I at? DV said, what's good? Pump for this game. Did I read this already? Yeah, I think yeah, I read that. I read that. Daniel in the building. What's up, Daniel? It's a Daniel said, yo, what's up, Daniel? Yeah, I appreciate you always watching, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Uh-oh. Daddy, chill. Gina, Kim is in the building. She said, hey, TGK, very nervous about the game tonight, but they got enough rest after being sluggish yesterday. I don't see them doing the same this game. I think Luca will play. He's not missing this game. And he's not. Good call. Good call. Here's the thing, though. They played sluggish yesterday, and I was, I was, I was saying like three days rest, get your sluggish game out the way, and have your Kings game be your ready to go game. So, hopefully that's the case tonight, right? I hope that's the case. Uh oh, Nix is in the building. What's good, Nix? He said, "TGK, what is good? What's, what's good with you, bro? What's good with you?" Uh, DV says, "Report says Luca is playing. Yes, he is. Yes, he is." Uh, these next two games going to be bloodbaths. Yeah, man. Uh, when we get into, like, uh, the opponent review, we're going to see, like, who should guard who, right? It's going to be very interesting. Looking forward to, to dissecting the Sacramento offense. I got a big amount. I took a different route. I, I am the king of the litter. What's up, Big J? I said, what's up, fam? Not much, man. Not much. It's been a great day. Vibes. Vibes are out of here. You know what I'm saying? Gina Kim says, uh, WTM <laughs> and not TGK. I'm messing with you. I know, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. My concerns are kid refs and energy, uh, and add defense. I don't want kid to make the wrong adjustments and rotations refs to ruin momentum and bad calls. Uh, us come out sluggish. Our D be horrible. I get you. I get you. And I raise you, uh, a Jason kid KFC reference. Um, maybe we'll watch major league. And get some Kentucky Fried Chicken, and uh, and put that in his locker. <laughs> the fact that Jason Kidd said that, bro, put that in his locker. Like it's just like Jason Kidd, you're ridiculous, bro. G two in the building. What's up, G two? He says the only reason I feel icky about this game is because it's a back to back. Um, yeah, it's probably icky for them as well because the Kings played last night. So both of the teams played last night. Both of the teams were in the West Coast. Um. Kings have a bit of an advantage. 
But I think the Mavericks will be all right, man. I think the Mavericks will be all right. Just hang in there. Uh, Talisha King. What's up, Talisha King? It's the first time I see you here. Let me hit you with the whole trifecta. Says, uh, King says, uh, honestly, the Kings is the only team that I'm worried about. And why is that? Why is that? Is it, um... Is it because uh, of the pace they can play with, with Fox, with Sabonis? Like, what about the Kings worry you? You know what I'm saying? Let me know. Put me on. Big J says, we need to start off high, and I think Sabonis is going to try bully ball. As long as Lively and Gafford can contain him, we are okay. But uh, if either gets in foul trouble, put DP on him. You got 12 fouls, bro. You got 12 fouls between Lively and Gafford, and I think you're good. You know what I'm saying? I think you're good. Vance Lewis in the building. <laughs> I'm confident in this game for some reason. Luca and Kai master masterpiece tonight. Kyrie does love playing against De'Aaron Fox for some reason. Like, if you remember the two games last year against Sacramento, Kyrie went crazy. Um, I don't know if Kyrie played in any of the games against Sacramento this year, but we're ready to go. He's ready to go. We need Kyrie tonight. Uh, as much as we need Luca, we need Kyrie just as much, right? Jenna Kim says these two games should be la uh, the last important games we play. And after that, I'm not worried about any other team. That is why I'm saying tonight is like the closest thing we're going to get to playoffs, man. This is the closest thing we're going to get to a playoff atmosphere. So be on the lookout for that, man. Uh, I feel like playing on a back-to-back -back late night, a better option for players because they rest up and heal up all day. Exactly. Exactly. They, it might be 7 o'clock over there for them, right? But at least it wasn't like they were in Dallas and then they had to go over there and lose three to two hours and then have to play right so i think we're good i think we're good uh nick said i don't think achilles is something they want to play with i wouldn't play luca any more than 30 minutes but who knows what the f kid gonna do i think i think it's a luca call bro at the end of the day uh nancy said, hey tj how are you doing tonight i'm doing good nancy i'm doing good happy that you are a member salute to you uh daniel says uh an achilles can be a serious injury if, if you're not careful i'm glad luca's playing tonight but will he be 100 percent? that we don't know bro that we don't know. That we do not know. You know what I'm saying? I, I couldn't tell you, bro. Couldn't tell you. The homie Lockbox. Lockbox. One of these days, we, we need you on the pregame show, bro. We got to set that up. Let me know your availability. Look at, look at the games uh, and, and let me know. We got to get you on here, bro. Got to get you on here. I got, I'm a man of my word. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to put, I want to I spotlight the the homies in, in the in the community. Gina Kim says, do you think Luca being sore is the reason why he's uh, been off these past few games? I think it just comes with uh, playing basketball as much as he's been playing it. Um, also, these games matter a lot more now. So the defenses are, I mean, Honestly, honestly, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it is fatigue. Because he's been playing like at an MVP level all year. He's still getting triple doubles. It's just the efficiency is coming down a little bit, right? So something is bothering him. Obviously, he had that uh, that weird, you know, hamstring strain. Now we got the Achilles. So his lower body is starting to deal with issues. I think we need to be strategic in how we allow him to rest if possible. Um... But he's just he's he's battling through it, bro. He's battling through it. I, I think he has a bit of a, a couple of injuries that he's dealing with. Kareem in the building. What up, TGK? What's up, man? How, how you doing? How you doing? Hope you doing good, bro. Again, uh, for everybody that's watching, if y'all don't mind dropping a like on a video, man, it goes a long way. Salute to everybody on Twitter that's watching. If you're watching on Twitter, you could comment too. Put a TGK in your comments, and I'll be able to read your comment. And if um, and if you want to become a member and use the cool emojis, uh, you come to YouTube and check them out. I'm, I'm trying to convert all the Twitter people to YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, if you're on Twitter, you can't, like, like rewind the video. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't know how it works. I don't know how it works. Y'all let me know. Larry in the building. Where'd you find me? Says, uh, Mass fans need something to complain about. That's what I got from listening to this. Dang. Dang, Larry. Larry. Larry don't hold back, man. Uh, Larry says, uh, infantilized mean to treat someone like a baby. Yeah, so, Larry, I, I know I'm just getting to your comments. How did you take that, right? How did you take that? It's, 
Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's a little bit. Uh, ben, uh, Ben's Kyrie. Kyrie's a grown ass man. He's happy and living good in Dallas, playing basketball and stuff. Uh, huh? I'm confused. <laughs> what are you confused about? Let me see. Uh, judge them on the court, not off the court. Yeah. And in Dallas, that's all I wanted for Kyrie is just to be able to come over here and play basketball and not have to worry about, you know, East Coast media or New York media and or Boston media and all that shenanigans that they have going on out there. Like, why does someone's personal life matter to us? Right. I forgot who asked me about PJ and his girlfriend. I, I spoke nothing about it. I don't care for that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I want the players to be happy playing for the Dallas Mavericks because the Dallas Mavericks are my favorite team ever. And so I just want the players to be in a great place, a great environment, and just ball out. Whatever you do in, in your personal life, that's your personal life, you know? Even Kyrie said it. Like, if I'm pumping gas, like, don't don't pull up on me. It makes me uncomfortable. Just, you know, wave hi, like, inform me and ask for a photo, and we go on about a business, but don't get so excited because it makes me uncomfortable. Like, yeah, I'm with that, man. Like, I'll, I'll tell you this much. If I ever saw Kyrie out in public and no one else, like, noticed it and I noticed it, I'm like, I'd be very, like, quiet. Like, yo, Kyrie, Kyrie. Like, I, I wouldn't try to say it so loud, but i try to get his attention. Like, hey, Kyrie, big fan. You know what I'm saying? Like, get a photo type shit, right? Oh, damn, I'm cussing over here. My fault. Hold on. My fault. My fault, man. I get shy, bro. Uh, Nick said, this is uh, one reason why I stopped uh, watching Lockdown 105.3 fan. They are MS. <sighs> I, I, you know, we're going to agree to disagree a little bit, right? I don't think it was that bad, right? But that's just me. That's just me. Uh, Nick says, going to have to dis- disagree with your take about the segment, bro. That is not a good reason to bring up something to talk about. They need to stick to talking basketball. And, Nick, I actually agree with you there. I agree with you there. I agree. It's obviously not my lane to, to to have to come up with uh segments like that, but they exist somewhere, right? And I just leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. Rich K says, good job, Reggie has a couple of degrees. He uses uh words the rest of us don't. Uh he makes a living off his words. That too. That that's true as well. You can these two games are a real last test, but if this team means business and we want to be contenders, then they should uh, have some fight in them tonight. Don't let the refs affect us. Play our game. And again, the Sacramento Kings uh, crowd, bro, they are they're great, man. The Sacramento Kings have a really good fan base. They're loud. It, I would say the Sacramento Kings are like the San Antonio Spurs of the West, but without the titles. They just have like a, a great fan base, man. I've been a, what, two... I've been at one San Antonio game and that that crowd was crazy, bro. Like die hard. They have chance. Like I don't even think the Mavericks have chance, right? The only chance we got is let's go Mavs defense and MVP. I think that's that's all the ones we got. The Spurs they have like hella chance. Like it's, it's pretty cool down there. Daniel says Luca is going to get guarded by Keegan Murray tonight. If Luca struggles, then Kyrie's going to have to carry the offense and the others have to step up too. Yeah, Keegan Murray, bro. Uh, again, it just depends how it, how how healthy is Luca's Achilles, and is it worth putting them out there? Is it worth it? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Uh, Go Goo, what's up? It says this will be the test that the team can be a threat. Do y'all think? Do y'all think the Mavericks could beat the Kings without Kyrie? You know, that's a, that's a great poll question. So on the current poll that that is up there is the confidence meter poll. Uh, 53% of y'all saying 77% confidence, 56%. Now, let me put another one up there, right? I see we got 18 likes, man. Let's get them likes up to like 30, man. Let's get to 30. Let's hit 30, man. Um, could these Mavs be Kings without Luca? I just want to get a, 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 a gauge on how y'all felt feel about this question. Let's see what y'all think, man. Uh, Gina Kim says, uh, I'm ready for some PJL tonight. Uh, this is a new team, so I expect this to be in the paint all night and be physical. Don't force threes either. Yeah, I think um, I think um, my fault. I'm I'm reading comments and trying to respond to you, but I think uh, with PJL, right? And I think with Gafford and Lively, I think you have a size advantage against the Kings. And I think you definitely got to utilize that. You know what I'm saying? 
Shout out to Ben. Yeah, man. Shout out to Ben, man. Shout out to Ben. Hello there. W's in the chat for Ben. I see it. I see it. I see it. Uh, Dina Kim says, Slightly is real for that. I hope more people tune in now. Yeah. Again, salute to Slightly, man. Uh, He didn't have to do that. There's so many people he could have named, right? So many people. And um, he he name dropped me, We Talk Maz, and Maz Outsiders. I just... And, and and it's not only me it's everyone that has contributed to the show all of y'all that's commented all the guests i've had it's everybody bro so you know that goes to them too nick says all that work is paying off happy for you bro thank you nick thank you thank you thank you and nick as i always say bro as i always say i'm not above being wrong with my takes so if you disagree please disagree with me man don't always I, I encourage everyone in here to call me out if y'all think I'm way off. If I'm ever off, call me all the way out. Like, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I do care. That's why I don't care if y'all do it, right? Like, y'all call me out. I I, I could take criticism, bro. I could take it. Did y'all not see my, my Luca video where 3 million people, you know, retweeted it? Not retweeted, but watched it and made a mockery of your boy? I got thick skin, dogs. Jenny Kim said, do you think Kid is going to put Maxi at the five at some point? I can see it now, and the Kings will take advantage of it. Then we'll have to clutch the game like we did versus the Nuggets. Here's the thing. You put Maxi at the five against a bonus, it's going to be so owner, all right? <laughs> I don't want to say that. It's going to be over, bro. So bon- nah, I ain't going to say it. Oh, it will be over, bro. It will be over. There's, there's absolutely no chance that the Dallas Mavericks will be able to beat um the, the Kings, if you even play around with that and try to put um and try to put Mr. Kleba against Gafford, like it just wouldn't work. It just wouldn't work. You know, doing a a, a a late show like this, I am my timing is a little bit off. I don't know what the hell is going on. So what we're gonna do is uh the starters for the Kings tonight is De'Aaron Fox, Kessler Edwards, Keegan Murray, Harrison Barnes, and Domantas Sabonis. All right, man. I think it's time to, to go ahead and take a look at the, the Kings. All right? What y'all say? What y'all think about that? I think it's time to look at the Kings and uh, see what they bring to the table. Let me see where I was last at with the comments, man. I don't want to get lost with the comments. Okay. So, 818 was the last one I read. All right. 818. All right, man. Let's go ahead and let's get into the opponent review. How you want it? Show me my opponent. Show me my opponent. All right, man. It's time to buckle down. It's time to see who we got tonight, all right? Let's take a look at the depth chart here. All right, yeah. So it says Keon Ellis is starting, but I just saw Grant Asses tweet uh, mentioned in the starters for the Kings, but Kessler Edwards is starting instead of Ellis. Yeah, and then they got King and Murray at the three. All right, all right, okay. Edwards at the two instead of Ellis. Uh, they also have Malink Monk, Davian Mitchell, Chris Duarte coming off the bench. They also got Alex Len. That's not. I ain't gonna lie, that's not a bad squad like that. They have that much guard play. That's a lot of guard play, though. They're small. And Demonis Simonis is the main center. Then they have a backup of Alex Lynn. And then JaVel McGee is back there. I like our centers versus theirs. Demonis is obviously head and shoulders, but I like our guys against even their backups way more than what they got. So uh, Keegan Murray, Keegan Murray and Harrison Barnes are like the main forwards. I'd have to see the rest of these guys. Let's take a look at their stats right quick. Let me see. Let me see. Hold on. I just saw this. Uh, did you see the Brian Damaris video going around? Seems like Clipper fans agree now. All that hate, and he was right all along. Uh, look, man. Hold on. My dog is moving around here, moving my damn cord, and it's causing my feed to go out. Oh, man. All right. No worries. No worries. No worries. No worries. Hold on. This is what happens when I let the dog run around. 
and you get some move stuff. So in the meantime, we're gonna go with the Brian Damaris uh, feed. There you go. All right, I'm back. Never mind. We don't have to. Now uh, I haven't seen that uh, uh, Gina Kim, by the way. So we'll see. So I'll go right here. Eight twenty-two. All right. All right, let's take a look at their stats, man. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Uh, De'Aaron Fox is leading the team with 26.7 points per game. Demonis Sabonis leading the team with 13.7 rebounds. He's also leading the team with 8.3 assists. De'Aaron Fox is averaging two steals per game, and Keegan Murray is averaging 0.7 blocks. Damn, they got they got they got several players in double digits. That's not bad. Um, hold on, I did not see Kevin Herter in their depth chart. Did he get traded. Oh my God, bro. How did I take us all the way in CAA? I'm trying to see how did I miss Kevin Hurt. He's not on the team. All right, that's someone we ain't got to worry about. Good, good, good. Bro, I'm sorry. One day I'm going to have like a high powered computer. And I won't have these little stupid issues. Anyway, uh, Demonis Sabonis, he's averaging 19.8 points per game, 10 rebound, 13 rebounds, almost 14. And Ada says he's almost averaging a triple-double, bro, as a center. He's like a Jokic out there. Malik Monk, uh, 15.7 points per game and five assists off the bench. Uh, Keegan Murray, 15 points per game, five rebounds. Harrison Barnes, 12 points per game, about three rebounds. Kevin Herter is not on this team. Uh, Trey Lau, seven points. Davion Mitchell, uh, four points. Chris Duarte, four points. Alex Lynn and JaVel McGee, they're averaging three rebounds per game. All right. But looking at this, right? They have one, two, three, four, five players that are averaging double digits, double digit points uh, per game. So they got several scores uh, that they could go to. Let's take a look at the three point percentage. Uh, the minus of bonus only takes one three per game, but he's averaging 40%. Harrison Barnes takes almost five, averaging 39.6%. Keon Ellis, he's not starting tonight, but he is averaging 38.9%. Trey Lowes, he's uh, averaging, what, 38.3%. Is Kevin Herter out for the season or something? Oh, yeah. He's, he's not on the team. He's just out for the season. Now I remember. Now I remember. Uh, Darren Fox, seven three-point attempts. Averaging 36%. They do not have Ke uh, Kevin Herter. Uh, Chris Duarte, 36%. And the rest of them are below league average. However, Keegan Murray, he's at 35%. Uh, percent, and Malik Monk is at 35% as well. And the starter that they have starting tonight, he is at 35% as well with not even one attempt per game. All right. They got plenty of shooters, man. They got plenty of shooters. What else do we need to take a look at, right? It's going to take a look at the advanced analytics. The advanced analytics. Twitter's a hell of a coach. Yes, he is, Jason Kidd. Yes, Twitter is a hell of a coach. You know what I'm saying? Hold on, hold on. Where is Sacramento Kings? Hey, Jason Kidd, uh, who is your favorite player on the Dallas Mavericks? Kimber! Ah, okay, okay. All right, let's take a look at the uh, Sacramento Kings lineup. Let's try to find... Current lineup they have. I don't think we're gonna find it because Edwards. Maybe I could look up Edwards, right? Let's look up Edwards. Let's see. Okay. Uh, I don't think Monk, Monk is starting though. Trey Lyles, no. No. Hmm. Yeah. Uh. So sorry about the analytics. There is no analytics to look at because the reason i don't do it uh whenever there's a, a player starting that doesn't normally start on the team there's just no point there's nothing we could go off of uh off of that i mean maybe and then the other lineups that they have they're the kevin herter he's out they have the most minutes so that's tough that's tough that is tough and as far as my show is concerned that's what I get. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what I get. Uh, let's get back into the comments for a little bit, man. We are almost at tip-off time, guys. We're almost at tip-off time. Trust me, it is going to go like this. It is going to go like this. So don't don't worry about it. Again, if you haven't hit a like on the video, hit a like, man. It goes a long way. Uh, appreciate y'all being here, man, as always. 
and uh, for all those on Twitter, man, y'all, y'all come check out the show on YouTube. Bro. Um, let me see. There we go. Daniel says, as long as others step up while Luka and Kyrie get their points, we will win this game. Uh, but the defense needs to step step up tonight and Friday. They did it against the Jazz. You know, the Mavericks have been doing that a lot. Like, how I would say this. If I could say this, may I say this. If the game early on, like the Kings are beating us, right? Like they're just scoring at will. I wouldn't get concerned because it feels like we're a second half team. I don't know if y'all saw PJ Washington's interview where he talked about, oh, you know, we, we made adjustments at halftime. We came out here with that focus. And then they held them to under 20 points in that uh, fourth quarter. They've been keeping teams at that 105, 107, 97 mark as far as total points. So I think if they come out, <laughs> if they come out a little sluggish tonight, don't be too concerned. Uh, give it to the second half, and they, they should turn it up, man. So they should turn it up. So hopefully hopefully that is the case, right? Hopefully that is the case. Uh, and then it says, uh, who do you think will be uh, Garden Fox? We're going we're gonna to say that for the coaching coaching with kid. We're going to say that for coaching with kid. Uh, Talisha Kings, I feel like uh, they're a tougher matchup, but it's not impossible to win on the road tonight. Yeah, it's not impossible. I totally agree. Uh, Monk been great off the bench. THJ needs to play better tonight because we need a six-man score or a score uh, we can trust off the bench. I don't want him getting excited after he makes a shot. Take some time. <laughs> yeah, like, like get the ball set and shoot, bro. But, like, get a good release. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Benz Lewis says Monk really good in the fourth quarter. That's one thing I'm worried about. Ah. Ah, ah, ah. Uh, Jam... What? Jamanish 214. Can I get on the pre two? Um I mean, I don't say no. I don't say no, right? But uh I I, I need to see uh, uh your work. You know what I'm saying? Like what kind of mass content you do. Uh and, and if that is the case, I'll, I'll go check it out and uh, we'll get you on here. You know what I'm saying? I'm not opposed to it. Um I I, I just gotta see that you you're a, a mass fan, you do mass content. And well, we could do a pregame show. Uh, other than that, Midnight Madness is open to everybody. So if you want to come on a, a Midnight Madness show, just be a member. It's 99 cents. And we chop it up, man. Chop it up. Again, you got you to look at the pregame show, like the production perspective of it. Like um, it's about bringing guests that also have production. That way, you know, we're, we're all kind of on that same page. I hope you understand what I'm trying to get at. You know what I'm saying? Daniel says, give me the Mavericks winning 127-104 against the Kings. Luka gets his uh, average triple-double. Kyrie gets his 25-plus. And P.J. Washington gets a solid 15 tonight as the third scorer. P.J. Washington is going to be big key tonight. Big key. Uh, Gene Kim says, uh, at least we know Mavs are a clutch team. So if it comes down to the wire, which I'm sure it will, we can trust the Mavs to stay poised and finish the game. And they do have the best clutch record in the league. So give the Mavericks uh, kudos kudos for that man and give give kudos to the Twitter coach right the Twitter's a hell of a coach yeah we are yeah we are thoughts of Lyles what's up thoughts of Lyles in the building what is good my guy what's up brother how you feeling about this one I am I ain't gonna lie man um, I don't know yet I don't know yet I think when we get the prediction time off I have a better feel, which is coming up in 10 minutes. So I feel good, but I'm also like a little nervous. You know what I'm saying? Like I bought wings because I know this game is going to be big. I want to enjoy food watching the game. What are y'all eating tonight, by the way? What are y'all eating tonight for the game? This is one of those games where you got to have a good meal while you're watching it. I ain't going to lie. This is one of those games. Uh, As far as the poll that I have on, uh, on, on the show right now, it says, could these Mavs beat the Kings without Luka? And 60% of y'all saying no. Damn. Damn, son. All right. All right. Damn, son. Where'd you find this? We'll leave, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. You know what I'm saying? All right. Uh, Big J says, uh, I think Reggie likes to use words to make him sound smart. You are not communicating effectively if the listener has to have a dictionary to listen to. That makes I, that makes a, that's a valid point, right? That's a valid point, because while I feel that I have a pretty good, pretty good, um, pretty good vocabulary, like his was very, um, it was next level, bro. I ain't gonna lie, like that was next level. Um, 
the atmosphere is crazy. I love their stadium. Yeah, I, I love the the uh, the uh, light the beam. Come on, yeah, y'all gotta admit it. Like even even though we're Luca fans, like I love the light the beam theme that they got. I think it's dope. I think it's dope. Jenny Kim says big concern big concern about Sabonis too. We gotta make sure we can contain him a little bit and make sure the threes don't fall uh, like we did with the Jazz yesterday. I hope our threes fall tonight though. All right. Damn, is it time? Is it time I do this? I think it's time. I think it's time, right? Twitter's a hell of a coach. Yeah, Twitter is a, a hell of a coach. Yeah, let's do this, man. Let's go ahead and let's coach with Jason Kidd. Yeah, I'm not the savior here. I'm not playing. I'm watching, just like you guys. That's just the season. No one's dying. So write some positive shit. I just asked you a question. And I'm giving you a fucking answer. All right, man, Coach Kid, he's giving you an effing answer, right? Giving you an effing answer. What are we going to do, Jason Kid? What are we going to do to combat the Sacramento Kings tonight? All right. Did y'all watch yesterday's game? Did y'all see Laurie Markkinen be wide open for threes on threes on threes on end? He was just left open a lot. There is one thing about Jason Kidd's defense that I do not like. I do not like the the over protectiveness of leaving your man to help another man as much as he does it. There's they double everybody and they double nobody. You get what I'm saying? Like they double everybody to where they double a nobody offensively that doesn't deserve to be doubled. Damn, I'm confusing myself. But no, I'm making sense. The Mavericks need to, to strategically double not just openly double anyone so play man to man but double in certain key moments like if Sabonis is on uh, on the block with a Kyrie double go help Kyrie right but if it's but if it's Fox on the block with Kyrie nah let Fox earn that bucket don't double because if you double Fox is going to find someone wide open for a three and what is our kryptonite wide open threes which we do it so often. I know this is a game plan that will not be changed by Jason Kidd. I know Jason Kidd will not change it at any moment. <laughs> but it is something that we have to deal with, right? And so me as a Twitter, the Mavericks Twitter coach. Twitter's a hell of a coach. I feel it is my responsibility to point things out because one day Jason Kidd might see the things we say, right? Because he has said it. He has said it before. So what I would do is uh, man-to-man -man defense. Utilize your size. Put DJJ on uh, on Fox. That's what I want to see on Fox. I think Edwards, I don't know much about Edwards. I think you put Luke on him. And then that kind of leaves Kyrie with uh, Harrison Barnes. But unless Harrison Barnes wants to... No, what else? Who, who's, that, who's that three? I'm tripping. Who is the Sacramento's three? Let me see. Let me see. Hold on. Because it ain't Monk. Who's that three? Oh, Keegan Murray. Damn. Honestly, Keegan Murray. I think, I think I want, I want to see what PJ could do with Demonis early on. Can PJ hold his ground, right? Nah, nah, never mind. Never mind. We'll put PJ on Keegan. We'll put DJJ on Fox. We'll put Kyrie on Edwards. We'll put Luca on Harrison Barnes. And we'll put Gafford on Sabonis. There we go. There we go. Now, do not help. <laughs> Luca don't need help against Barnes. Come on now. You don't need help. Kyrie might need a little help. But... At the end of the day, when it comes to Sabonis, you might have to help. All right? Especially if he's on a block, it de depends against who it is. That's that's who you need to step up for and help, and help double. Now, the thing is, offensively, what are you going to do to keep up with them? I don't think they have the size, bro. I don't think they have the size against the Dallas Mavericks. And what have we done lately is we punish people in the paint. I think as long as the Mavericks protect the ball, 
Six turnovers in a game is amazing. Get it to five. If you can get it to five turnovers only, we're good. Protect the ball, attack the paint, and stay consistent throughout the whole game, and then lock down defense in the second half, you should be good. You should be good. But it's not going to be easy, man. It's not going to be easy. The Sacramento Kings, they're going to be hyped tonight. We're both 42 and 29. We are both 42 and 29. Both of us. This is for the sixth spot, man. This is for playoff positioning. This matters, man. This game matters, and the Dallas Mavericks need to come out here and play like ducks. And that is your coaching with Kid. Second. Yeah, I'm not the savior here. I'm not playing. I'm watching, just like you guys. That's just the season. No one's dying. So write some positive shit. I just asked you a question. And I'm giving you a fucking answer. All right, man. I had to throw in that little, that little. Man, it looks more official, don't it? It looks a little, a little more official. I'm, I'm always proud of, uh, I'm always proud of what I be doing on this show. Just, you know, improving stuff, right? So, I think that was nice. That was a nice little touch right there. All right. Uh, uh oh, sticks in the building. What's up, sticks? What is up? You know what's cool? You know what's cool? Um, sticks. I remember. Uh, like what's funny is like I'll, I'll sometimes see people on comments and we'll comment we'll go back and forth or either either it's like a positive conversation or a negative conversation and then i'll be like well come check out the pregame show even if it's like a bad conversation i'm like well come check out the pregame show right sticks is one of them where uh i forgot what it was we were talking about some he was talking about shows i think or something like that or i forgot what it was but i think it was like a segment that i do um that I was able to relate it, not not that he was talking about my show, and I was like, "Come to the show, bro!" And then he came to the show. And here he is. That's dope, man. It's dope. Luca definitely worth playing. Yeah, man. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he's good to go. That's the main concern. Logan says, "I'm I'm I'm glad Jimmy High Roller made a video about Luca. People don't appreciate his talent or skill. It's sick how they change the narrative every year to avoid giving Luca the MVP. That is sad. That is sad. And I think if the Mavericks could get to that." That top four, top five seed, I think, I think we'd be rolling, man. I think we'd be rocking and rolling. And um, not only do you have the seed you want, preferably, like preferably the fourth would be great, because the Clippers are losing. The Pelicans, did the Pelicans lose? Let's see. The Pelicans are only down two right now. That's wild. That is wild. My dog wants to go outside. We we about to take him outside here in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, man, I think if the Mavericks can get that fifth or fourth seed, Luca should be the MVP without a doubt. Gina Kim said, "Without Luca, Kai, uh, because without Luca, I think it'll be harder because Kiss sucks without Luca. Without Kai, there's still a chance, uh, but a very low chance." Got you. Daniel says, "If there is a silver lining, the Kings don't have Kevin Herter for this series against the Mavs. Yeah, it's a two-game series, man. Two-game series." Uh, we need two of our starters to win anything, man. Let's be for real. Damn, man. Kyrie can't give us a master class, bro. Tim Hardaway can't give us another 40. Richie K says we need to uh chance fire Kitty it and get the Danny uh and get the Denny. Everything else fixes itself. I would love for the Mavericks uh to have better chance at the stadium. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. Gavin Lively going to dunk all over the opponents if they don't trap uh the paint points going off. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to have to do something, man. Pick your poison. Either you're going to let Lucas shoot threes and Kyrie have open threes, or you're going to protect the paint. They're going to have a rough one. Uh, Larry says, I took it as him saying uh, Kai has had some rough breaks in the media. Uh, uh, to me, kind of his own doing, uh, while others was the media looking for faults. But he's happy here in Dallas because of the organization. Yep, I agree. Jenny comes as facts, and they still don't appreciate him because Shaq and Crawford said SGA should be MVP, even though Shaq said it, it shouldn't be the best player, best team. And Craw Crawford said he needs recognition. Ugh. He does, man. I mean, to be that young and, and be uh, leading the team uh, to like what the number one seed for parts of the season, I think that's that's pretty impressive for SGA, man. So even though he is a bit of a foul merchant, shout out to him. 
Uh oh, we got Black Noir in the building. Uh oh, the money. The money. Talks. The money's here. here comes the money. money, money, money. All right, can't play it too much. You know what I'm saying? So salute to you guys. Salute to you, Black Noir. Appreciate you, bro. As always. Uh, we need the rest, the best versions of everyone tonight. MVP Luca, Uncle Drew, Maxi Messiah, Hemi Hardaway. You mean, you mean. P. Jail and Big Dan Dan, etc. I agree with you. Uh, he's hurt. He's been hurt. That's why. Yeah. I'm. Mean, I think it's uh. <laughs> Kimber! Yeah, yeah, Timmy. If if y'all heard me on the Mavs, uh, we talked Mavs playback last night. Let me know if I was annoying because I was spamming that Timmy all night, man. I was spamming all night. Uh oh. Joe is in the building checking in the. Sh uh, sh Checking in to show support for you, sir. Appreciate you, Joe, as always. I think I know what time it is. Y'all already know what time it is, man. It is time for the game predictions. Y'all go ahead and get y'all predictions down in the comments below. Let's go ahead and let's get this started. All right. So without looking... Without looking, I have not looked. Uh, let me get let me get over here in my uh, my other headquarters over here. Uh, I haven't looked, so I don't know what the odds are, ladies and gentlemen. So we're gonna see this together. What? <laughs> the Mavericks are only favored. Well, they're not favored, but the Mavericks, not the Kings. I mean, the Mavericks, I mean, the Kings, what am I saying? I'm just, I'm just shocked at this though. The Kings are favored by one point tonight, ladies and gentlemen, the Kings are favored by one point. I'm just saying, I'm just saying they are favored by one point tonight. They are favored by one point tonight in Sacramento. What does that tell y'all, right? What what do y'all think that says? What do y'all think that says? They're favored by one point, and the total implied score is 233 and a half. Man, let's get to the predictions. Let's get to the predictions, man. Get y'all comments down below. Get your predictions down below. Let's see. Coming up with my score. Carry the one. Move the two. Uh. Damn. It didn't repeat. All right, bet, bet, bet. We're gonna loop it. And now it's gonna go. It's gonna go stupid. I'ma loop it. It's gonna go stupid. It's the golden eye beat. It's what I see. The Mavericks about to hit a three. Uh. All right. Uh. This be going so hard, bro. But do I want to go with this prediction? We're going to thrive like we did live because the Mavericks going to win by five. Let's get it, man. I got the Dallas Mavericks winning 123 to 118. Let's go, Mavs. Let's go and let's check everybody in the comments, man. I hope y'all appreciate my, my cringy rhymes. You know what I'm saying? Off the dome. You already know I'm about to eat my damn wings all alone. I might jump on the playback with my dog, but my dog can't talk on the mic. Hold on. What is what is this? Base Alcatraz. Phoenix Suns final 10 games is insane. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> Timmy from South Park could hit better shots. <laughs> Kimber! Damn. Damn. Uh, Lav in the building. Hi, DJJ has to be spot on versus Fox. I think uh, this would be the key. Fox, DJJ has the, the length, pause. He has everything you kind of would need for someone to be able to guard Mr. Mr. Fox. So I do like that matchup. I do like that matchup. I'm not going to lie. I do like that matchup. But yeah, I like that matchup. I think I, I said that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let's get to the predictions. Hurry up and listen. Right, we got a couple minutes. Uh, I think I'm here. 
Uh, what do you watch NBA games on? Uh, I, there's a link I could tell you about, but as far as like where I watch the Mavs, I watch them on We Talk Mavs Playback TV. That's where we be. But I got you. I, I know you. I, I know where to send you the link. Uh, Colin's in the building. What the hell? What's up, Colin? Fine. I just I just saw you, my guy. Great show, TGK. Let's bank this game today and a message to the West. Yes. Yes. B fam in the building. What's up, B fam? Mass have to protect the pain against this team. Yeah. Sure as hell do. All right, man. Let's let me read a couple of uh, scores. My fault, guys. Laugh says 117, 112 Mavs. I like it. The Bucks just choked in the fourth. That's crazy. Nick says 123, 109 Mavs. I rock with it. I rock with it. D Star, 125, 118 Mavs. Bad, bad, bad. D Star. Huh. I haven't, I'm not sure if I've seen that name, but salute to you, bro. I be thinking I remember every name, but I don't. You know. Johnny B. Uh oh. Ah, oh, Johnny B. 128, 122 Kings. Where my where my boo sound at? Boo. Don't play drop. I agree. Don't. Don't play drop. Yeah, don't. Matter of fact, force Sabonis to shoot threes. Force him to shoot 15 of them things. You know what I'm saying? I want to see if he can knock down. If, if Sabonis can knock down two in a row, all right, I'll guard you. I'll guard your threes. The kid is calling 123, 118 Mavs. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Look at us. Hey, Sticks. I have a knack for like calling the game to the T. And the fact that you told me your kid got close to it yesterday. He's on to something, man. He, he might know a thing or two, bro. You might have to start taking his bets. Uh, Gina Kim says 133-130 Mavs. Close, high-scoring game. Last time then uh, when the other team was favored by one against the Mavs, we won. And that was the Nuggets game. I think we could pull it off and get a win. I agree. I agree. Mailbox says 120-98. Luka bounce back. Damn. That's a blowout. Uh, Edison Pierce, 126-118. Mavs won in overtime. Oh, man. I can't do overtime. How long are y'all going to watch the game tonight? Are y'all going to be able to watch the whole game? I don't know if I'll be able to. Eddie in the building. What up, Eddie? He said, uh, Mavs 134, Kings 128. Ooh, it's going to be a good game tonight, man. Good game tonight. Uh-oh, we got Div in the building. He says, Mavs 143 to 120. Wow. Luka going to go off with threes tonight. My kid said, you copying his score. <laughs> you're not the beard. You're not the system. You're the problem. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Uh, Johnny B soundbite should be, come on, man. I got you. Come on now, dog. Come on, man. Hey, now, nah, tell your kid, hey, we came up with the same scores. We we like that, man. We we, we connected. Uh, Gina Kim said, we got to start off hot. It'll be difficult to try to come back, even though I do think if we're down, we'll come back second half. We need to make shots early, especially Luke Kai, get PJ involved too. Yep. All right, man, I think the game's about to start. Yeah, game starts. Let me get the hell up out of here. You're not going to be on playback or post game, right? I'll see if I can stop by playback. I feel like I annoyed uh, Thomas R. If Thomas R is watching, we need to talk, Thomas R. He's, he was upset that I was supporting Tim Hardaway Jr. last night, but I was supporting. You know what I'm saying? He was having a good game. Uh, Who bully said Mavs need to be aggressive and get some boner in <laughs> foul trouble. <laughs> I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm with it. All right, man. Appreciate y'all being here, man. Thank you so much. This is always a blast. This is always fun. Uh, for everybody that's watching on Twitter, definitely come over here to YouTube and just drop a like on a video. It just helps go a long way, especially trying to grow a channel here. Anyway, man, it's been your boy, TGK, and I'm going to catch y'all on the very next one. Peace out. <laughs>